and welcome to the July edition of the Forensic Update. I'm Bill Duffin. It's been three years since the sexual assault kit backlogs report in USA Today made headlines across the country. Since then, the question has been not only how we can solve the issue, but how do we prevent it from happening again? The Utah Department of Public Safety, with support from the Bureau of Justice Assistance, has developed a website to track the status of submitted kits. Utah has a 30-day deadline for police to send the kits to the crime lab, and an additional 30-day deadline for testing. Using this new site, victims can enter in their kit number, birth month, and year to see input from forensic nurses, police, and crime laboratory employees, and be confident their case is being tested. The site is part of a 2017 state law mandating kits must be tested if a victim provides a statement to police. A new dye could be the latest tool in touch DNA collection. Researchers from Flinders University in Australia have created a dye that fluoresces when it comes in contact with latent cellular material in a fingerprint, even up to a year after the initial contact. The researchers were able to collect samples from surfaces after someone brushed past, or saliva from speaking. An aerosol spray of the dye is now in the works and is expected to hit the market within three years. Drones can help us capture aerial images of natural disasters, locate a missing hiker, and may even deliver your next online package. But these high-tech devices can be a challenge for digital investigators. We spoke with NFSTC expert Ricky Ruckman about the new NIST training tool made specifically for data extraction from these high-flying cameras. Basically, the only difference between the evidence that you're getting from a regular phone or camera versus on the drone is the drone's not on the ground. If you take a video with your video camera, it's almost the same type of camera that's on the drone that's taking the video. This tool is helpful for investigators in that it allows them to do a drive run before actually conducting investigations on high profile cases. With more and more drones being available to the public, it's important that law enforcement is able to get as much digital evidence as possible from the drones to be able to prosecute criminals. We put a link to the free computer forensic research data set on our As Seen on the Forensic Update page. Your next iPhone update will come with a security gap fix. Apple is shutting down the ability to transfer data from the lightning port after the phone has been locked for one hour. Law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, have used the port to gain access to suspects' phones. Apple says the fix is for user protection against attacks of their personal data. This month, the next generation of forensic scientists are getting some unique hands-on summer training. The annual ROTC Biometrics and Forensics Internship begins July 17th. For two weeks, 12 cadets from across the country will fall in to NFSTC's headquarters for an immersive course covering biometrics, chemistry, and digital exploitation. And starting July 23rd, FIU's inaugural CSI Forensic Science Summer Camp kicks off in Miami. More than 20 students will spend the week learning from the experts about evidence collection, documentation, and analysis. You can follow along on our social media channels for pictures and videos from both the cadets and students. Until next time, I'm Bill Duffin, and thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this latest program from NFSTC. If you'd like to see more, click on one of these links and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.